And what I want to do in the time I have available is to discuss some of the work that I've been doing on nuclear security over the last 30 years. Um, <clears throat> what are the problems with nuclear? It's often discussed as environmental problems and hazards from uh, nuclear accidents, such as at Chernobyl and more recently at Fukushima. But I want to talk about something that's not often discussed at all, which is the problem of nuclear security or insecurity. An international world where we sell nuclear technology to um, heat water to generate electricity is both a nuclear bizarre, but it's also very bizarre. Now, the first thing I want to, to mention is um, that uh, there was an international conference in The Hague uh, last month called the Global Nuclear Security Conference. And um, they did raise a number of questions that were of concern, but because the countries were there, were very much uh, countries who also support nuclear energy, they didn't want to come to the conclusion that nuclear security was too much of a problem to deny them using nuclear energy. So they produced a very bland set of conclusions. Um, I draw attention to a comment that Dr. Victor Galinsky was a former member of the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission, who pointed out that um, and I quote that even so-called arms controllers follow themselves trying to establish their foreign fight by supporting nuclear energy development and devising painless proposals. Um, he goes on to point out that uh, nuclear security should come first and not as an afterthought. We should support as much nuclear power that is consistent with international security, not as much security as the spread of nuclear power would allow. And my view is that that means we shouldn't support any nuclear power because you can't secure the whole of the nuclear uh, infrastructure forever without any anything being breached. Um, and I'll just bring attention to you of a report that came out at the beginning of this week in Japan uh, of the um, so-called Hiroshima uh, report, which looks at international uh, problems of nuclear power, including security. And they point out that um, nuclear security has got three unresolved problems, and I've, and I've written them out in the papers so you can read them. And I want to say that that is those are three of the key problems you always address when you, when you deal with nuclear, nuclear security. Um, that it's surrounded by secrecy for understandable reasons. Um, when I talk to nuclear security professionals, they say you can't possibly have a public dialogue on this because we give away to the secrets which would allow terrorists to know how to get into nuclear facilities and uh, cause trouble. And my view on that is that um, you can discuss anything nuclear security in public forums. You don't have to give access rules and access points. We certainly can discuss whether or not the methods they produce for making facilities secure are sensible. They often tell people like myself who are skeptical that uh, nuclear facilities can be made secure against terrorist attacks, and that the stores they put the radioactive material into are very robust and very secure against attack. This is an example of a kind of very strong physical store that you would have for some kind of new materials, which they tell me you, you, can't, you can't destroy. Well, this picture was taken um, from a paper that a colleague of mine, Dr. Gordon Thompson, in the Institute for um, Resource and Security Studies in, in Boston, in, in the United States, did a paper in December last year. And he got these two pictures from the published literature from a, uh, an American arms company who wanted to demonstrate how effective their arms were. <laughs> so that's the before, and that's the after. And what that tells me is that when people assure me that you can build very secure nuclear facilities that can't be destroyed, uh, well, that's an example of where uh, that was meant to demonstrate that you can destroy it by the arms uh, makers. And that was only using the, that was only using the, the penetrator warhead. It wasn't actually using an explosive. So that was destroyed by pure, by pure force and not an explosion. And the kind of weapons that, that uh, we used there could be obtained um, illegally, but could be obtained on the market by people who want to cause level of damage to uh, facilities which are storing new materials. Um, <clears throat> I just want to move on now to um, my concern about the United Kingdom. We, we've got um, 111 
metric tons of plutonium stored at Selfield. And just to put that into context for you, 111 metric tons is the same as 111,000 kilograms. And you can make a devastating nuclear bomb with five kilograms. And five kilograms is about the size of a large orange. So that's, that's an example of the kind of security problem built up by using nuclear power, taking the fuel, and processing it, and then stockpiling the reprocessed plutonium at uh, a place like Southfield. Uh, the next thing I want to come on to is the United Kingdom policy, why I'm so critical of it. At the same time as the United Kingdom had 111,000 kilograms of weapons usable nuclear explosive at Sellafield, it also wants to make plutonium based mocks fill and sell that around the world to other countries that have nuclear power reactors. Um, and it also wants to build a new generation of new nuclear plants in the UK. And so we'll be in a situation sometime in the future to go ahead with nuclear power plants which are being decommissioned, that is, they're being um, closed down and over time fuels taken out and then they've knocked down the buildings over a long that time period. Nuclear power plants which are operating and nuclear power plants have been constructed. And on some of the sites they'll have all three, an old one being decommissioned, an operating nuclear plant and one being built. And which means that they'll have contractors bring uh, materials into and out of that site on a permanent basis. And therefore, the security of the site is obviously opened up to all sorts of possibilities of endangerment. So I'll just conclude what I wanted to say with um, my view of how they are actually, which is this. I think those of you who know the, the Simpsons will, uh, will recognize that. Um, it's the home I'm running the nuclear power plant. Now, when that little URL goes off the screen, you see that I, I have a I have a very strong impression that the British government at the moment has the same mindset as Homer, and <laughs> running nuclear security um, as he looks a bit confused running the nuclear power plant. So I just close there with my talk, and I'm very happy to take questions now or later. Thank you very much.